Edupreneurs are offering online learning as a cure-all, but the evaluations of online charters and online learning show that they actually produce worse results than traditional public schools. The goal of the edupreneurs is to replace teachers with computers as a cost-cutting measure. Don't be fooled. The best education happens because of the interaction between human teachers and students. I bet everyone in this room can think of a teacher who changed their life, a teacher who touched them. No one will ever look back and remember the computer that changed their life. <laughs> Students become inspired by teachers they love, teachers they respect, even by teachers they fear but secretly love. A computer has many wonderful uses, but it can never replicate a human relationship. Wonderful teachers know the key to intrinsic motivation. No computer does. Students who work for digital badges lose their motivation when the badges are no longer there. Students who learn because they've been inspired, by their been inspired by their teacher never lose their motivation. So what should we be doing instead of testing every student every year from grades three through eight and punishing teachers in closing schools? I wrote a book called Reign of Error because somebody said, all you do is complain, you don't give the answers. So I wrote a book called Reign of Error and it has all the solutions in it, you can read that. But I think that you don't have time to read it tonight, so I'll give you a thumbnail summary. <laughs> I suggest that we start at the beginning. Make sure that every pregnant woman has access to medical care early in her pregnancy. <laughs> I just recently read a, an article, and I think it was The Economist, that said the United States has the worst, the highest maternal death rate of any developed country in the world. That's a disgrace. How, how can we in the 21st century have the highest maternal death rate of any developed country in the world? The lack of prenatal care is associated not only with danger to the mother, but with cognitive and physical disabilities. We either pay now for medical care or we pay much more later for children with high needs. In a survey conducted by the Mar March of Dimes in the World Health Organization, the U.S. ranked as one of the worst nations in the world for providing prenatal care. That ranking means more than international test scores because it is a cause of low academic performance. The low test scores are a result of poor health care and poverty. We should address the causes, not the consequences. But we should provide high quality early childhood education for all children. As compared to our global peers, the U.S. ranks far below them and access to well-prepared teachers and programs for young children. In schools, we should recruit and support well-prepared teachers. We should give them the resources and the mentoring they need. We should give them the respect they deserve as professionals. Don't search for teachers who should be fired. Search for teachers who need extra support and make sure it is there. We should reduce class sizes wherever needed especially in schools where the children are struggling. Where they are struggling, they need smaller classes, not large ones. Children who are having trouble learning to read or to speak English need individual attention. We should make sure that the schools have the professional staff they need for the children they serve. A full-time nurse, a psychologist, a social worker, a librarian with a real library, bilingual teachers and teachers for children with disabilities. We should make sure that every school has a full and balanced curriculum in the arts and sciences so that students can learn and study in depth. We should make sure that every school has a dynamic program in the arts, in physical education, in robotics, where every student has a chance to succeed and to excel. The world needs and recognizes many kinds of talents, not just test-taking skills. We should encourage creativity and imagination. We should encourage critical thinking and dreaming and flights of fancy. We should recognize the accomplishments that have gone unnoticed in a test-driven culture. As Jesse Hagopian has written so eloquently, our children are more than a score. Each of them has his or her own hopes and fears and dreams. Give them the opportunity to do their work and be proud of what they can do. Don't criticize them for what they can't do. I want to tell you about a program that is a dynamic and successful program that has been field tested and that has produced great outcomes. I'm going next week, my last speaking engagement forever and ever and ever, like the last blog I was ever gonna write. <laughs> but my last speech 
of my career next week is in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I learned about something called the Kalamazoo Promise. It was funded anonymously, which is the highest form of charity. Every graduate of the Kalamazoo Public Schools who has attended at least four years and is accepted by any college or university in the state receives a scholarship that covers most of his or her tuition. If they attended Kalamazoo Public Schools from K through 12, all of their tuition and fees are fully covered. The program will be funded, the sponsors say, in perpetuity. This prom promise has had a catalytic effect on the schools, on students, teachers, parents in the community. Teachers are collaborating to help students. Students are working harder than ever to succeed. Enrollments, which had been declining in the public schools, have increased dramatically. The schools opened the new pre-K program. Parents are involved in their children's work. The graduation rate has gone up. The promise of a cost-free college education for those who persist has created bottom-up energy to improve student success in school. Now, that is a reform that's worthy of replication. It works. The goal of American schools is not to prepare students for global competitions. It is to prepare them to be good citizens in a working democracy. It is to prepare them to have good character, to take care of themselves and their family and their community. It is to prepare them to vote wisely, to understand issues that will come before them as voters, to participate in the political process, and to serve on juries and judge their peers. Many people ask, how will we hold teachers accountable if we don't test every student every year? Well, no one else in the world does it. That's one response. Uh, but my answer is, that's the wrong question. Accountability starts at the, at the top, not the bottom. Hold the, hold the leaders accountable for supplying our schools with the resources they need to do a good job. Hold the governor and the legislature accountable for supplying the funding that schools need to pay teachers well, to reduce class sizes, and to offer a robust program for their students. Hold the state commissioner accountable for supporting the schools instead of privatizing them, closing them, or punishing them for low scores. The changes I propose are not visionary, although they may seem to be now. They are within our reach. They can indeed be reached by having leadership in the state that puts the needs of children, families, communities, schools, and education first. These needs are intertwined. You cannot put one above the other. How do you get this kind of leadership? Simple. Vote for it. Thank you.